You're watching KSL, Utah's source for news. Welcome to KSL News at Noon. Right now you're looking live at the funeral proceedings for Utah County Sheriff Sergeant Corey Ride. Services started there about an hour ago in Orem and we're about three quarters of the way through the program. Utah County Sheriff Jim Tracy is currently speaking. Sergeant Ride was killed last week when he pulled over to the side of the road in Saratoga Springs and a suspect shot him before leading police on a chase through several counties. We have team coverage this afternoon. Sheriff Park and Haley Smith are live outside the UCCU Event Center at Utah Valley University. Sam Penrod is live along the processional route, and Keith McCord is live at the cemetery in Spanish Fork. But first, we begin with Sheriff Park, who was inside for those funeral services. Shara. Yeah, Lori, inside there are between four and 5,000 members of law enforcement in the community paying tribute, honoring Sergeant Corey Ride. Uh, the service began with a prayer by Sergeant Ride's son and then another son, Nathan Moeller, thanked the community, community for the outpouring of support over the past few days while remembering his father. Our dad loved this profession and he loved all the people that he worked with. And now we can really see why there is an amazing brotherhood that exists that without something like this or without being a police officer yourself, I don't think you'd ever be able to know. Now, following the remarks from Nathan Moeller, next was a life sketch by Sergeant Ride's siblings. They talked about him growing up on a farm uh, in the south end of the valley, being a cowboy, attending American Fork High School and becoming an Eagle Scout. They also talked about him serving a mission to New York City and how funny that was to them that a cowboy would be sent to the city and how he eventually sent his cowboy boots home saying that he didn't need them. He also served in the Utah National Guard for 12 years and, and his first job in law enforcement was with the Utah Department of Correction and and then his family talked about how in 1994 he joined the Utah County Sheriff's Office and for the last 19 years he has served that office proudly. They also talked about how he loved his wife. She was the love of his life, Nanette, and they were married in the Mount Tippinogos Temple. They have five kids, eight grandchildren, and many friends and family talked about how you know, he just loved and was so impressed by his kids. You know, the following, uh, at this point, we, we just finished up with a musical number, and Sheriff Jim Tracy, as mentioned earlier, is speaking about uh, Sergeant Ride and his time with the Utah County Sheriff's Office. Then Governor Gary Herbert is going to say a few words before uh, we move on with the, the funeral service. I will continue to follow what's going on and have another update for you coming up in about uh, 20 minutes. But again, right now the service is about remembering the good times and the service and the legacy that is being left behind by Sergeant Ride. And I want to point out that one of his deputies said that that legacy was to love one another, to work hard and to serve others. Back to you in studio. All right, Sheriff Park, thank you. And of course, the sheriff just mentioned thousands of people are in attendance right now at that funeral, with a majority of them being law enforcement from agencies around the country. Around the country, it's always such an amazing sight to see that show of solidarity and support. New specialist Haley Smith talked with some of those officers this morning as they walked into the event center today. Haley. Yes, Andrew and Lori, emotions are very high for just about everyone I spoke with today. As Sharon mentioned, four to 5,000 people here in attendance, and it appears that about 75% of those are officers in different law enforcement agencies from around the state and even the country. If you take a look behind me, you can see just part of, of the, the surroundings that are surrounding the, the university campus right now. Motorcycles, we have flags, we have ribbons. It is definitely something uh, that, that you're not used to seeing and even students I've talked with have said that they just can't believe everything that's gone into honoring and supporting the Ride family. Now talking with some of the officers they, this morning, they tell me that their hearts are full. This tragedy affects the whole family of law enforcement in the state of Utah and across the nation. This is something that these men and women face the possibility of every day. Um, it truly is a brotherhood and a family, and we all support each other. Because that could have been any one of us. And you don't know when it's going to be your time. We all go out and we put the badge on every day. We do our duty, knowing that we may not come home to our family, like Sergeant Ride didn't come home to his. So the least we can do is show our respect to him and his family. 
because there are so many people here this morning. It's been hard to see exactly how many different state departments have come out or out of state departments. We've uh, had reports of roughly 250 out of state officers here to show their support for the Ride family, for Sergeant Ride and the legacy that he lived. But it's really hard to encompass uh, all of the feelings and emotions um, from the people here attending this funeral. All I have to say is that this law enforcement presence and the respect for Sergeant Ride and his family is remarkable. Andrew and Lori. Haley Smith live from Orem for us this afternoon as we continue our team coverage. We want to remind you, you can watch the funeral in its entirety on our website, KSL.com. According to the program here uh, and what we're seeing is we're monitoring it here in studio. Speaker uh, right now is Blake Ride, the father of Corey Ride, speaking right now. Again, you can see that live on KSL.com in its entirety. As soon as services wrap up, Sergeant Ride's casket will make its way to Spanish Fork. Here is a map of the processional route. It will go south on I-15 and exit at 300 south in Spanish Fork. Then it will go east to 400 east, eventually turning right into the Spanish Fork Cemetery. And Spanish Fork has asked community members to line the route in honor of Sergeant Ride. And that's where we find new specialist Sam Penrod. Sam. Lori and Andrew, we're here along Main Street where the procession will pass. We've told sometime between 1 and 1.30 this afternoon, but you can see there are flags out here that have been lined by volunteers. We also see a lot of blue ribbons that have been tied around tree trunks. They've been tied around posts, even mailboxes. That is from the wives of police officers as a tribute as well to Sergeant Ride. Last night, we saw a huge turnout, a lot of love and support for the Ride family at a viewing held at an LDS chapel here a few blocks from us. Of course, the Ride family lives west of us here uh, in the Benjamin area, and so there are a lot of uh, community ties here to Spanish Fork. Also, we know that uh, he has a lot of uh, family and friends from American Fork where he grew up, and then, of course, people from Eagle Mountain. That is the area where he was last assigned, where he worked uh, exclusively and patrolled, and so a lot of people got to know him and appreciated the service and uh, protection that he offered the citizens there. Now, here in Spanish Fork this morning, they let out the junior high and high schools at 11.15, and here just uh, in the past couple of minutes at noon, all of the elementary schools in town were dismissed. That way, uh, there's no uh, problems with traffic as the procession comes through, because that procession will last about 90 minutes, and also, it will give an opportunity for parents to bring their children out here to the procession to uh, show their support to the Ride family. Spanish Fork City has asked that people bring flags, that if there are scouts or Cub Scouts, that they come out here in uniform and uh, show their respect to Sergeant Ride and his family. And so we're expecting a very uh, patriotic, very moving scene out here as the uh, afternoon goes on, as the procession makes its way through Spanish Fork and ultimately to the Spanish Fork Cemetery. And that's where our Keith McCord is now. Keith? Thank you, Sam. The uh, Spanish Fort Cemetery is all set now. It's all ready to go behind me. This is the main street that will be leading up to Sergeant Ride's uh, gravesite, lined with hundreds of flags. Uh, flags will align everywhere from UVU all the way to the gravesite. What will happen when the, uh, the, the family gets to the cemetery? There are some RVs back right at the entrance of the cemetery. Sergeant Ride's casket will be put on a horse-drawn carriage. That that carriage will then move its way up this street here, this flag line street, and then it will go all the way up uh, to the gravesite, which is uh, just 180 degrees behind us here. So it's just all total uh, lined up with flags there. The green canopies there is the uh, is the ride uh, gravesite, and there will be a 21 gun salute. Uh, the family will gather there. It'll be a, a ceremony. But what will happen is once the uh, once his casket does get here to those RVs, the family will take about an hour to let all of the law enforcement uh, officers and everybody else to get to the cemetery. As you heard from, from Sharon Haley, there are several thousand attending the funeral. It will take a long time to get everybody here who wants to be here. So, uh, you know, the streets around here are kind of tight, so it'll, they're going to give take an hour to let everybody get set and get into place before they actually start the graveside service. So uh, it'll be probably starting around 3.30 or so before we get to that point. But uh, anyway, the workers are done here, the cemetery set, 
but uh, just like uh, on Main Street in Spanish Fork, as Sam said, the streets are lined with flags, very patriotic. It's a nice look here today. And uh, so we're standing by uh, for that and we'll uh, bring it to you live when it happens. Back to you in the studio. All right, Keith McCord, thank you. And of course, we will bring you live coverage of that. And we'll continue to follow this story, including the one piece of good news to report today. Utah County Sheriff Jim Tracy said in his remarks that Deputy Greg Sherwood, who was also shot in this rampage, his condition is improving. Part of the bullet casing, which was uh, causing the most concern for Sherwood, has now moved away from his brain. Again, this according to Sheriff Tracy, and he could be out of the hospital in the next couple of days. So that is a fantastic piece of news there. If you'd like to continue to watch the funeral live, you can do so on uh, KSL Channel 5.2 and online streaming live at KSL.com. You're watching KSL, Utah's source for news. A hero is being remembered at this hour in Utah County. The entire community has come out to honor Sheriff's Deputy Corey Ride and support his family and friends in their time of grief. Welcome back into the special edition of KSL 5 News at noon. Sergeant Ride's funeral is nearing its end, and when it does, we will take the funeral procession live. Sheriff Park is outside the UCCU Event Center where preparations for that procession are getting underway. Shara. Yeah, we've actually been seeing some of the officers coming out, some of the motorcycle officers getting ready because we're towards the end of this funeral service. Right now, Governor Gary Herbert is at the podium speaking about, uh, you know, Sergeant Wright and his service with the Utah County Sheriff's Office. But prior to him, I mean, he just got up on stage, but prior to him was Sergeant Wright's father, Blake Wright, speaking about his son's life. He says that Corey Wright believed in three principles, family, faith, and serving others. Now, Sergeant Wright leaves behind a wide who many have said today was the love of his life. He also leaves behind five children, one of which spoke today about the outpouring of love and support the family has felt from the community. I spoke with Sergeant Ride's brother-in-law just before the service got underway, and he talked about how the family is doing and what Corey would think about the service today. The family's doing well. I, I'm concerned about tomorrow and all of this hoopla, as my wife calls it, um, is over. Um, but, uh, and, and I know Corey's rolling his eyes right now at this whole thing, but glad that his brothers are able to, to, to pay him this tribute, and he would do the same if it was them. Now, in the last 25 minutes, we have also heard from Sheriff Jim Tracy from the Utah County Sheriff's Office. Uh, you know, Sergeant Wright was with the department for 19 years, and here are a few things he said about Corey Wright. He said, your honor and courage will never be challenged. You have paid the ultimate price. He also went on to say that Corey was truly the embodiment of the saying, walk softly and carry a big stick. We also spoke with him prior to the service, and here's what he had to say. Now, it doesn't sound like we have that, but he just talked about how today was, you know, the, the purpose of today was to honor Sergeant Corey Ride, his legacy of service. And that is, again, what we've been hearing from a lot of officers today. Now, a program update, as soon as uh, Governor Herbert is done speaking, we'll hear closing remarks from Bishop Dwayne Lundell. Then we'll have a musical number and then a closing prayer. So we are about, uh, about 20, 25 minutes away from this funeral service wrapping up. As soon as we uh, get word that that has happened, we will let you know. But live from uh, Utah County. Back to you guys. Sheriff Park reporting live. Suffice to say, Sheriff Jim Tracy with some very special and meaningful words about Sergeant Corey Ride this afternoon. The community response has been overwhelming today, not only in communities near Orem and Utah County, but elsewhere across the state and even the country. News specialist Haley Smith has been talking to those attending the services. She joins us now live with more from that angle. Haley. Yes, well, looking around this campus, Andrew, uh, in midst of this tragedy, there is a sense of oneness and compassion. Hearts are full. I spoke with several officers who just say there was no way they couldn't come out to this funeral today. From, from volunteers putting up hundreds of these flags around the campus here on my left, to if you look behind me, a massive American flag hoisted up by two fire trucks this morning that hangs over the entrance and exit that the body of Sergeant Ryan will be taken out of here when these funeral services wrap up. But officers, again, I spoke with saying that they had to be here today to show their support for the family.
It's a surreal feeling, honestly, when we come in and we, we see all of this support from the public, from the communities uh, affected. Freedom's not free. There's sacrifices that come with it. Soldiers go across the sea and they fight in foreign lands. We do our job here and he paid the ultimate price. And that sacrifice is not forgotten by any of us here. Now hundreds of volunteers have come out over the last week to show their support for the Wright family. Right now, if we can take uh, my shot live, if we take a look here behind me, all of these people, spectators, have just come out within the last 15 minutes or so, carrying these American flags, uh, waiting for this service to wrap up, to show their support for, for uh, a man who so many are calling a fallen hero here in Utah County. As Shara just mentioned, if we turn even more to the right, we can see these motorcycles officers gearing up, getting ready here to uh, to escort in the procession line, this hearse that will carry Sergeant Ride out to the uh, Spanish Fork Cemetery. And of course, we will continue to follow these developments as things wrap up. More and more people here in front of me coming out of the UVU uh, event center as things are getting closer to, uh, to closing time for the funeral portion itself. Of course, we have team coverage that we will continue through the rest of the day and the rest of the service. Back to you in studio. Haley Smith reporting live from Orem as well for us this afternoon. And if you've never seen one of these funerals in person, it is a spectacular display, a very appropriate honor for someone who gave his life in service of his community. Certainly something we will be keeping our eye on and be carrying live as soon as that processional starts. And as Haley just mentioned, people are just beginning to line uh, up outside of UVU, but they'll also be lighting the processional route. And as soon as services wrap up, Sergeant Wright's casket will make its way to space. Spanish Fork. Here's a map of that procession route. It will go south on I-15 and then exit at 300 south in Spanish Fork. Then it will go east to 400 east, eventually turning right into the Spanish Fork Cemetery. And Sam Penrod is standing along that route right now. And, you know, sad to say here, Sam, uh, you were standing along the route when Sergeant Derek Johnson, uh, his funeral procession, and we tend to see the same type of patriotic display. You know, a lot of people here in the community, this really affects them. And so they want to take part. They want to show their love and respect to Sergeant Wright and his family. And so here in the past few minutes, we've started to watch a few people start to take uh, their places here along Main Street and Spanish Fork. You know, it's about an 11 mile drive from Center Street in Orem, where the procession will uh, get on I-15 till it will exit here at Main Street and Spanish Fork. And then it's going to be about a mile and a half from here as the procession makes its way to the cemetery. So there's a lot of room for people to come out uh, here in Spanish Fork and uh, be, be a part of this procession. We expect that it will likely arrive here the way the funeral service is going at this point, probably close to uh, between 115 and 145 would be our best guess at this point. And so there is, uh, you know, about a half hour still for people to come out here and uh, be in place. We know that uh, some of the Spanish Fork officers, I've seen a couple from nearby Salem, they are actually positioning themselves here along Main Street because they will be doing traffic control so the procession can continue south here uninterrupted with the street lights. And so there will be some traffic impact during the procession that will last about an hour and a half. But most people here in Spanish Fork understand that. They know what is going on and it's a small price for them to pay uh, to be able to uh, have this honor for Sergeant Ride here in Spanish Fork. Now, the city officials here have encouraged uh, parents to bring their children who were let out of school uh, early today to come down here with flags, also encouraging scouts or Cub Scouts to wear their uniforms as well and just to line this procession. So as the family comes through, as the other deputies in the Utah County Sheriff's department come by, they'll be able to see all of the support that there is for Sergeant Ride and his family. So we'll continue to uh, be here throughout the afternoon and bring you that procession as it happens. All right, that is Sam Penrod live along the procession uh, route this afternoon. Let's now go to Keith McCord, who is at the Spanish Fork Cemetery. And Keith, what does the scene look like there? I know it's going to be a while before the procession finally gets to the cemetery. 
Yeah, the cemetery right now, very quiet. Uh, it's pretty much all set up. There's a few things that some of the officers and workers are doing, but uh, in a few hours, this place will be, uh, there'll be thousands and thousands of people here for the ceremony. Uh, Ride's uh, uh, gravesite is right there under those green canopies. Uh, there's a couple of uh, officers there uh, getting ready for uh, their uh, participation in it. To the left of the, of the gravesite, at some point during the ceremony, there will be a 21-gun salute. Uh, there may also be uh, uh, the typical uh, buglers playing taps. Uh, you know, uh, there will be a bugler starting it. There'll be the echo bugler somewhere else in the cemetery. That's expected as well. Now, what will happen when uh, the procession gets to the cemetery after it goes through Main Street and Spanish Fork? Uh, it will stop at the entrance to the cemetery and the uh, Sergeant Ride's casket will be put on a horse-drawn carriage, and then it will come up this flag line street. It's right in the middle of the cemetery, and that uh, the horse-drawn carriage will go right right up the street here and go right in front of the, uh, the, the gravesite, where there will then be the uh, short gravesite ceremony, and then things will wrap up from there. But when the casket gets here, when the procession gets to the, to the cemetery, they'll wait about an hour before they get started, before they do the horse-drawn carriage to give people time to get in here. As you know, thousands of people attending the funeral. A lot of officers want to be here to be part of this, and so it's going to take them time to get set and get into place. So uh, that will probably be somewhere, could be 3, 3.30, something like that. So, uh, But that's to give the opportunity for everybody to be here who wants to be. We'll be here live covering it all afternoon. Back to you guys. And of course, we will break into our coverage and carry that live as well. We will continue to follow the funeral proceedings for Sergeant Corey Ryan throughout the remainder of the afternoon. Continuing coverage on KSL and KSL.com as closing remarks have just begun at the funeral proceedings there in Orem at the UCCU Event Center. We will be right back. We're taking a live look at Sergeant Corey Ride's funeral. Now, this, these are some of the closing remarks that are taking place before the funeral procession will begin this afternoon. We are watching this as the uh, funeral proceedings wrap up. They will then head toward the uh, processional. We have heard from a number of uh, people here during this funeral, which has lasted some hour and 45 minutes, including Governor Gary Herbert, the father of Corey Ride, Blake Ride, as well as Utah County Sheriff Jim Tracy. We will continue to monitor this. I believe we're going to keep this shot up for a minute as we hear the closing uh, uh, musical number here, which is Bring Him Home, being sung by Johnny Revel. Uh, the closing remarks just wrapping up, and uh, we will listen in for just a moment here.
You see there uh, live the musical number of the uh, closing for the funeral for Sergeant Corey Ride, the Utah County Sheriff's Office uh, Sergeant killed last week in the line of duty. Let's send it out to Shara Park and Carol Makita live as this uh, funeral begins to wrap up. Shara, Carol, what are you seeing there? You know, uh, Andrew, right now we are lined up outside the, the UCCU Events Center and the motorcade has already lined up. They are, uh, you know, just down the entire stretchway here uh, under that giant flag that we showed earlier in the broadcast. And they're getting ready uh, as this funeral wraps up. I think they're doing the closing prayer at this moment. And then the funeral procession will get underway and head towards Spanish Fork. I want to bring Carol Makita in here. Carol has been inside listening intently to what's been going on here with the funeral. Who's been speaking? Tell me about your thoughts, what, what you're coming away with from this. Really, there was a remarkably beautiful feeling inside that event center. We have uh, witnessed some of these uh, funerals before, and they're all remarkably touching. But uh, today, there was uh, a tremendous feeling of togetherness from this community. Uh, the brotherhood was mentioned so many times. The musical numbers were absolutely gorgeous and very tender. I don't think that there was a dry eye among all of the members of the law enforcement community and guests and friends and family members who were there. We witnessed um, Nanette ride uh, a number of times, just place her head on her oldest son's shoulder um, as a, a tender moment being experienced. So many memories, some of them uh, charming childhood memories from his siblings and uh, others from his colleagues in law enforcement. It, uh, it, it really has been lovely and uh, even brought the governor to tears, uh, very emotional a couple of times. So uh, there's much uh, to talk about and, and much to remember. And I think that's one of the lessons we learned today is that uh, a week ago we did not know who this man was, most of us. And now we will never forget him. Uh, thank you guys for the commentary. That's Shira Park, Carol Makita, as they stand outside the UCCU Event Center there. Uh, just being told the closing prayer by Chance Ride has concluded. We are keeping an eye on this uh, as they get set to exit the facility there and head toward the processional route. By the way, we were just looking at a live picture from Topper 5 of that ladder truck display, and I just want to mention that that is reserved only for officers who are killed in the line of duty. So that is a significant um, memorial to uh, Sergeant Corey Wright. And again, you can see Bab Pipes players right there standing nearby the casket. A number of dignitaries, and I don't know if uh, how um, easily it was able to be seen on television, but notice Congressman Jason Chaffetz there, as well as Governor Gary Herbert, who uh, provided some remarks just a bit ago. A number of dignitaries, as you can see from that shot there, a, a large number of law enforcement officials uh, from around the state and other places from around the country as well. And uh, we've been talking about this. Unfortunately, we have seen this far too often. Sergeant Derek Johnson of the Draper Police Department last September. These uh, ceremonies, these processions, these uh, remembrances are so touching, so special for the family because it really shows the support that the law enforcement community has. And important to remember here too, Lori, that this was a father of five, a grandfather of eight, a very... Uh, very much a family man and all too often that is forgotten in these uh, times that these police officers at the end of the day they go home to a family. Absolutely and, and you can see the bagpipers standing by. Most of these bagpipers come from the fire and police departments in most major cities. They have a special brigade used specifically unfortunately for these types of events. They're called the Emerald Society and listen in you can hear them play.
And you've been listening to the uh, traditional bagpipes, which are played at the uh, funeral ceremonies for an officer, a law enforcement officer who has died in the line of duty. We're being told that's an Irish tradition uh, that uh, was traditionally held for the city of Boston, initially firefighters who had died in the line of duty and now has become synonymous with other uh, members of the law enforcement community, firefighters as well, who um, die in the line of duty. You see there the casket leaving the UCCU event center capacity 8,500 and many of those seats are filled to honor Sergeant Corey Ride this afternoon. And we're going to head out to Sheriff Park who's standing outside the UCCU event center um, as that casket makes its way outside. Sheriff, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Yeah, Lori, if you look down behind me here, you can see that the hearse has now come out. Uh, Sergeant Ride's casket is now inside there, and uh, the motorcade is lined up, ready to lead this processional. Uh, Chopper 5 can show you an aerial view of what's going on here. But here on the ground, I've been speaking with some of these officers who are part of this motorcade. I want to speak uh, to one of our Provo officers here at the very end, that uh, closest to this hearse that will be going down the processional route. And tell me, first of all, your name and your, your rank with the office. I'm a senior patrolman, uh, Austin Williams. Austin, uh, tell us about being part of this motorcade, what it's like to uh, contribute to this, this service. You know, it's a it's a very honoring uh, position that we get to be in to, to lead the hearse out and to kind of show tribute to a wonderful man. Um, it's a humbling experience and it's a special uh, experience to be able to sacrifice a little bit to come out here in the cold and to do this for somebody who sacrificed it all. So. Thank you so much. We appreciate your service. And we've also been talking with folks here along uh, the processional route, even just here at UCCU at the Utah Valley University. Um, folks lining up here with flags. And we have uh, one lady here. Tell me why you decided to come out and, and show your support for Sergeant Ride. My um, brother-in-law and sister-in-law are Katie and Rory Rasmussen, and he's a canine officer in Provo. And I'm here to honor their service that they've been providing. And when you see, I mean, the display here, the flag, all of these officers, uh, tell me your feelings. Oh, just overwhelming. Um, I can see of the dedication and the service that everybody and the camaraderie that they have, and it's overwhelming. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here today. Uh, Lori, that, this is what we're going to hear throughout this processional as it gets underway. Folks lining the street, we're going to see that with the, the American flags. We know that the Spanish Fork uh, city offices, uh, city leaders had asked as many residents as possible to come out and show their support, not only for Sergeant Ride, but all law enforcement in Utah that, you know, so generously go and serve every day, putting their lives on the line for us. And so again, right behind me here, you can see that uh, the hearse is line up. It actually looks like uh, they are bringing the casket out at this time. That's when you see those officers lined up along the side there. They'll usually walk the, the casket down and then place it inside the hearse. And then from there, the processional will get underway. So uh, at this point, it looks like we're just a few minutes from that happening. You can see them standing at attention um, from chopper five. We can actually see now that the casket is out of the building and they are now, in fact, walking towards the hearse. It is approaching the hearse at this point. Um, you know, we're just going to let the silence here as this this takes place. It is a very solemn um, thing to watch happen. So we're just going to be silent for just a few more minutes.
We are taking a live look from Chopper 5 of the casket going into the hearse. And I just want to mention, Andrew, that you noticed there as they were carrying that casket, it was feet first. And generally, law enforcement and military personnel are carried feet first, as in feet first into battle. Clergy and chaplains are carried head first in funeral processions because they uh, lead with their heart. So there, this uh, service is steeped in symbolism as we go through this. The American flag, it's five by nine. It's only used for two groups of people if you have a draped casket. It's for veterans and those law enforcement who are killed in the line of duty. And again, you saw that there was an American flag draped over that casket. The tradition, the symbolism, honoring the life of Sergeant Corey Ride and, and my observation just watching that as the casket uh, left the UCCU event center and there you start to see in the center of your screen the uh, family members assembled there all sharing hugs. My observation is how difficult those emotions must be right this moment as they see uh, the casket uh, go into the back of a hearse and sharing memories. You see a number of small children there being held uh, by adults and just the uh, the number of emotions that must be going through that group of people right now um, must be just uh, difficult to fathom, quite frankly. You know, in the last few days, we've heard from Sergeant Corey Ride's a widow, Nanette, and uh, we've heard her talk about her husband and her love for her husband, and I can only imagine what she's going through because, of course, she's flanked by her family, friends, and so much su support. But in the coming days, I can only imagine the kind of pain and sorrow that she's going through. It must be uh, terribly difficult to go through. The one, um, I guess, piece of solace that you could give is that uh, there was a large family that has been there and pledged to provide support throughout. The Utah County Sheriff's Office is a very tight-knit law enforcement organization. I've worked with them uh, since I have lived here in Utah on a regular basis, and uh, there is no better law enforcement office in this state than the Utah County Sheriff's Office. We saw a number of speakers, a number of singers from the office itself, uh, various deputies, sergeants, even uh, public information officer Sergeant Spencer Cannon providing uh, wonderful music and singing earlier during the funeral service for Sergeant Corey Ride, as you see folks now beginning to exit the UCCU event center. And as you see this display of law enforcement, you know, sometimes you think, okay, well, um, who is uh, patrolling Utah County at this moment? Because the bulk of them are at this funeral service. And I think what's so great about law enforcement is there are deputies or police officers from all over the state who are currently patrolling Utah County. So members of that office can be present here. And again, you see the ladder trucks. And again, that's only reserved for members of law enforcement who have died in the line of duty. And oftentimes uh, we have seen where a number of law enforcement officials will come from counties and, and really statewide. We heard a number of uh, officials who attended this funeral from across the country honoring Sergeant Ride and his sacrifice, his service for nearly 20 years to the Utah County Sheriff's Office. Uh, truly a touching scene there. Again, the capacity there at the UCCU Event Center, nearly 9,000, and many of those seats were full this afternoon. Keeping an eye on the processional now, uh, the route, it will go up from this area, which if you're familiar with Utah County at all, this is uh, very close to Interstate 15. The casket and the processional will then wind its way back out to the interstate, exiting at 300 south in Spanish Fork, and then to 400 east toward the Spanish Fork. Cemetery. So we'll keep an eye on the processional, which is uh, beginning as soon as uh, everyone exits the UCCU event center there. Uh, stunning images from Chopper 5, a large crowd assembled to honor the life of Sergeant Corey Ride. We've been following this since uh, just before 11 o'clock. That's when the funeral started. We'll uh, reset here. You see a number of people already lining the processional route just outside the event center with the American flags in hand. And we will pick back up our coverage once that procession exits I-15. And again, you will see an enormous display of people, American flags, children, um, everyone from any generation coming together to, to pay their respects to Sergeant Corey Ride. And again, we will break into coverage for that. But in the meantime, thank you for joining us for this special edition of KSL News at Noon.
been an emotional day in Utah's law enforcement communities as Sergeant Corey Ride, a 19 year veteran with the Utah County Sheriff's Department, was laid to rest. We've been following the final salute to Sergeant Ride all day here on KSL. We certainly have. It has been, as mentioned, a somber day. It has been challenging as friends, family, even complete strangers gathered to honor one of Utah's finest and bravest. Well, tonight we continue our live team coverage. We begin with new specialist Keith McCord, who attended the graveside ceremony today. And Keith, we saw law enforcement from all over Utah showing up today. Yeah, Mike, you know, it took uh, a couple of hours for everybody who wanted to attend to get into the cemetery, and it took several hours for them to finally empty out after the service was over. But the cemetery tonight, quiet again. At about 2.45, Sergeant Ride's casket was brought to the graveside by a horse-drawn carriage. His widow, Nan, was riding up on front with the driver. Family members followed behind as hundreds of motorcycle officers stood at attention. The graveside ceremony concluded as per protocol with the Utah County Sheriff's Dispatcher giving Officer Ride's final call. Sergeant Corey Ride, we thank you for your dedication and service to the citizens of Utah County, the Utah County Sheriff's Office, the state of Utah, and to the United States of America. Your life of service and your ultimate sacrifice will never be forgotten. Tonight at 6 and at 6.30, we'll have more images from the cemetery and uh, some of the sights and sounds that went on here today. I'm Keith McCord, live at 5. Tough to hear that final call, uh, Keith. Thank you. As mentioned, the funeral service for Sergeant Ride was filled with emotion, but there are also some really beautiful tributes. Carol Makita was there and joins us now live from UVU. Deanie and Mike, thousands of law enforcement officers, friends, and family came together today to pay tribute to a man they love and admire. The somber sound of the bagpipe echoed the feelings of so many that this one man is a loss to all of us. Corey Ride, the speaker said, loved his family, his faith, and serving others. Our dad loved this profession, and he loved all the people that he worked with, and now we can really see why. There is an amazing brotherhood. As a loving wife, as a child, as a mother and father, as a relative, as a law enforcement brother or sister, or as a community, this is the day that we dread. Now you will hear from more family members and friends and also hear some very beautiful music coming up on KSL 5 News at 6. Live at 5, I'm Carol Makita. New specialist Haley Smith continues our team coverage from the Utah Valley University Event Center with a look at how officers in the community are responding. Emotions are at their peak today for everyone I spoke with. I would estimate several thousand people came out to attend Sergeant Corey Ride's funeral. Of those, about 75% appear to be from law enforcement agencies around the state and even country. Talking with officers, they say their hearts are full. Because that could have been any one of us. And you don't know when it's going to be your time. We all go out and we put the badge on every day. We do our duty, knowing that we may not come home to our family, like Sergeant Ride didn't come home to his. So the least we can do is show our respect to him and his family. Firefighters spent the morning hoisting up this flag on two fire trucks this morning to show their support for Sergeant Ride and his family. And the police officer presence and the law enforcement presence was remarkable at his funeral today. Live at 5, I'm Haley Smith. Haley, thank you. The casket of Sergeant Ride was taken from Orem along I-15 to Spanish Fork. It was there hundreds of people crowded onto the procession route to help pay their final respects. Central Utah Special Sam Penrod is in Spanish Fork right now. And Sam, it was extremely touching to watch these streets lined with people. Yes, Mike, it was a very impressive tribute that continued for more than an hour as police car after police car passed by and people really stood here uh, in a solemn moment to honor Sergeant Ride and his family. A motorcycle escort with his fellow deputies leading the way 
the casket of Sergeant Corey Ride passed along the streets of Spanish Fork. Few people along the route knew him or his family, but still took the time to hold flags and to salute the fallen deputy who had helped protect them. Because he was a part of our community and we want to show our support to him and, and that we support his family and give them respect. And it was touching to see so many people pay their respects out here today. In fact, you could see many of Sergeant Ride's family members had tears in their eyes as they drove by. And we'll share more of those moments coming up at 6.30. Sam Ponrod, live at 5. Thank you, Sam. During the funeral, we also learned some promising news about Sergeant Greg Sherwood, the other deputy who was shot Thursday. Just before we started this service, it was made known to us that our wounded deputy, who had been wounded in the head, that he is out of surgery this morning and that the projectile had been taken. And it had actually moved forward and out of the brain area that was so concerning to the doctors and that he is well and already awake and had been Skyping with some of our people here and he may be released in a few days from the hospital. We've seen some solemn moments during today's services for Sergeant Corey Ride. We'll have a complete wrap up of today's services throughout the evening right here on KSL 5 News. For more on Sergeant Ride's funeral, you can also visit KSL.com or follow us on Twitter at KSL 5 TV. Yet it is not how Sergeant Ride and those others died that made them heroes. It is how they lived and their willingness to serve and sacrifice that makes them heroes. Some very kind words from family and friends of a long time and well-liked law enforcement officer, Sergeant Corey Ride, who was laid to rest earlier today. Thousands came to the cemetery in Spanish Fork following the formal funeral service on the UVU campus. Keith McCord joins us from Sergeant Ride's final resting place. Keith, this is a relatively small cemetery and we saw in our live coverage how long it took for all the people to get there. Yeah, you know, several thousand people and just as many law enforcement vehicles all converging on this cemetery in a very short time. You know, officer funerals are all put together according to longstanding protocol with lots of family help as well. Despite the huge crowd today, the mood was somber. Here's some of the sights and sounds. At 245, with hundreds of motorcycle officers lining the way, Sergeant Corey Ride's casket entered the Spanish Fork Cemetery. His widow, Nanette, sitting next to the driver. Friends and family followed the procession to the gravesite. The thousands of fellow officers, their families, and many residents from the nearby community stood at attention in silence. A bagpiper played as the casket was placed before the family at the gravesite. And then there was a prayer. his life following protocol a 21 gun salute and a helicopter flyover performed by air med the department of public safety chopper five and life flight which did the traditional missing man formation the stars and stripes covered sergeant Wright's casket was then folded and presented to the family one j150 valley then as everyone in attendance stood and saluted the Utah County Dispatcher gave Officer Ride his final call and farewell. 1J150, Sergeant Corey Ride, we thank you for your dedication and service to the citizens of Utah County, the Utah County Sheriff's Office, the state of Utah, and to the United States of America. A very somber day here for the funeral. The uh, cemetery is not empty yet. There's a lot of people driving through the cemetery. Suspect it's probably people from the neighborhood, perhaps friends who couldn't get here today. An obvious sign of respect. A long and emotional day, but one that went very well. Back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, it did overall. Hey, thank you, Keith. Well, Rice Funeral brought hundreds of law enforcement from pretty much all over the region. And community, community members lined the streets of Orem and Spanish Fork as the procession made its way down to the cemetery. New specialist Mike Anderson has a look at those sites and reaction from those who came to offer their respects. 
Yeah, guys, uh, hundreds of people were along the streets here in Spanish Fork, many with connections to law enforcement and other with ties to Ride's family. But for the many others that were here, their only connection to Ride was the, how their, his story touched them. The rumbling engines and flashing lights, all a massive show of support that for some evokes feelings of respect. Very touching. And in others, much stronger emotions. We just wanted to um, let my children witness this and see what, a, what an amazing experience it is. For Emily's family, my husband is a police officer. The death of any officer in the line of duty, we all feel their loss. Always hits close to home. A sentiment you can see in others as the hearse carrying ride passes by. The displays of support are everywhere. A flag held up by two fire engines, another lifted by a public works vehicle. I was an officer for 10 years and, and lost a few um, fellow officers and sort of touches home. Miles long, the procession moves through the streets of Orem and down to Spanish Fork. I was raised by a police officer and uh, thought I ought to show my respect. Hundreds more stand by, watching nearly as many vehicles pass through. I think it just makes us appreciate law enforcement. We don't realize or we forget that they put their lives on the line every day. You know, I've teared up three or four times. It's kind of nice to stand out here with hand on heart and, and pay some respects. While many here are strangers to the right family, others have closer ties. Well, my best friend's uh, father died. Still, you could argue that all of them are here for the same reason. I felt it was the right thing to do to honor uh, Sergeant Ride. His daughter is a really good girl, and I respect her family and everyone who was out here. And there were family here from uh, all over Utah and from several surrounding states. And just to give you an idea of the length, it took uh, all of them about an hour and a half, even longer to get from Orem here to the cemetery in Stannis Fork. Back to you guys. That was a nice tribute, Mike. Thanks. All right, if you did not have a chance to see it live earlier today, it was a beautiful and emotional funeral service for Sergeant Ride this morning. It was. Religion specialist Carol Makita was there and joins us now live from Orem where the service took place. Dini and Mike, it really felt as though all of the people of Utah came together this morning to pay tribute to Sergeant Corey Ride and to lend support to his family. As many said here, he is one of the good guys. His dear wife, Nan, who calls him her knight in shining armor, followed the flag-draped casket of Sergeant Corey Ride. His son, Nathan, expressed his family's deepest gratitude for the outpouring of love and promise to fulfill his mother's desire for bulletproof windows in all law enforcement cars. That's idea, and however we can make that possible, we won't, and for you officers, we won't stop until we make it a reality. Our dad didn't die for nothing, and you guys won't either. Tears flowed as a colleague and sister sang Homeward Bound. Sergeant Ride's first and greatest love was his family. Corey's legacy to Nan, his children, grandchildren, and all of us is to love one another. He was also a man of faith. He was not perfect, and his brothers and sisters know that. But he was a good man who strived to live a good life and to follow the Savior. And Sergeant Ride went beyond the call of duty to help people. You have given the ultimate sacrifice to the citizens of Utah, and in the end, your sacrifice will help and secure that, tr that evil will not triumph over good. We, all of us here, owe you a debt that we cannot repay. Now, just a week ago, so many of us did not know Sergeant Corey Ride, but after today, Mike and Dini, we all know we will never forget him. Uh, that's for sure. All right. Uh, Carol Mikita, live for us in Utah County this evening. Carol, thank you. There was one moment during the funeral that evoked applause. It was actually news about Sergeant Greg Sherwood, the other deputy injured last Thursday. Just before we started this service, it was made known to us that our wounded deputy, who had been wounded in the head, that he is out of surgery this morning and that the projectile had been taken and it had actually moved forward and out of the brain area that was so concerning to the doctors and that he is well and already awake 
and had been Skyping with some of our people here, and he may be released in a few days from the hospital. We'll have a complete wrap-up of today's services throughout the night right here on KSL 5 News. For more on Sergeant Ride's funeral, you can always visit ksl.com or stay here for the KSL News at 6.30. As Utah celebrated and honored the life of Sergeant Corey Ride today, one moment sparked applause. We learned the second deputy shot by the same suspect could soon be out of the hospital. Deputy Greg Sherwood had surgery today to remove the bullet from his head. And Utah County Sheriff Jim Tracy announced during the funeral that this afternoon Sherwood was awake, he was talking, and he should be going home within the next few days. Thousands of law enforcement officers, friends and family came together today to pay tribute to Sergeant Ride. It was a beautiful service capped with a solemn ceremony at the Spanish Fork Cemetery. J150 Valley. One J150 Valley. One J150 Sergeant Corey Ride. We thank you for your dedication and service to the citizens of Utah County, the Utah County Sheriff's Office, the state of Utah, and to the United States of America. A lot of emotions today. The funeral procession from Orem and through the streets of Spanish Fork allowed thousands more to pay their final respects to Sergeant Ride. People like us who never knew Sergeant Ride but felt the need to support his family and the brotherhood of police officers. Central Utah Specialist Sam Penrod tonight shared that story. You know, it's been an emotional day for so many. Family, friends, police officers from across Utah, even from other states, and strangers who all came to honor and remember Sergeant Corey Ride. The roar of police motorcycles led the procession, an impressive sight from Chopper 5 along the freeway. But as the procession began down Main Street in Spanish Fork, people stood quietly to pay the respects. Sergeant Corey Ride's casket was escorted by his fellow deputies in the Utah County Sheriff's Office. Family members were moved to tears by the flags, ribbons, and the crowds who came to pay tribute to him. Patriotism is a big part of our country, and these police officers are here helping to make sure that we keep our country safe. Scott Johnson was one of many Boy Scouts who gave away flags to those along the procession. One of the recipients of a flag is nine-year-old Jordan Tingey. To honor him for his bravery. Spanish Fork schools let out early to allow students to pay the respects, and many parents use the opportunity to teach their children some of life's most important lessons are learned outside of the classroom. So we just wanted to, to use this as a moment to show our respects and to teach our kids about uh, uh, what something like this means. And as the police cars kept coming, a somber reminder that the men and women of law enforcement put their lives on the line every day. We've got family and friends that are in law enforcement and we, we think about them all the time and so it, it's always sad when something like this strikes but this is definitely amazing to see the amount of people in this line of cars. And so many people say they will never forget today, the day they had the chance to honor a fallen deputy in their hometown. Sam Penrod, KSL 5 News, Spanish Fork.